This is part 44 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss optimizing the image gallery that we created in part 43 using the concept of event bubbling and event delegation. In addition to optimizing the image gallery for performance, we also want to enhance it. And this is how we want to enhance it. We want to include two drop-down lists. One is for the effect and the other one is for time in seconds. So if I select three as time in seconds and slide as the effect, and once we click on any of the image thumbnail, notice that the old image slowly slides up and the new image slowly slides down. And that animation happens over a period of three seconds. Now if we select fade as the effect and when we click on a thumbnail, the old image slowly fades out and the new image slowly fades in. Again, that animation happens over a period of three seconds. In addition to these two drop down lists, we also want to have these two buttons, enlarge and shrink. When we click this shrink button, we want to reduce the height and width of the main image by 100 pixels. If I click the shrink button again, we want to reduce its size again. When we click the enlarge button, we want to increase the height and width by 100 pixels. If we click it again, we want to increase the height and width again. So let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. This is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. The problem with this example at the moment is that, notice we are attaching these event handler functions to each image element that is nested inside the element with id div container. At the moment, notice we have got five image elements that are nested within the div element. So these are those five image elements. So we are attaching these three event handler functions that is mouse over, mouse out, and click to each and every image element. So that means we've got five image elements, three event handlers, five multiplied by three, we will have 15 event handler functions in memory. Imagine what's gonna happen if you have 500 image elements. You will then have 500 into three event handler functions, that is 1500 event handler functions in memory. That's not very good for performance. We can optimize this by attaching event handlers to the parent element, that is, to this div element. That way, we will only have three event handler functions in memory, no matter how many image elements you have, right? So instead of attaching these three event handler functions to each image element, I'm going to attach them to the parent element. And notice we are doing that using on function. So the on function is opening here and it's ending here. And this JSON object is specifying the three event handler functions. We also need to specify the selector. That's the second parameter. And our selector is going to be image element. So basically what we are saying here is whenever any of these three events are triggered on any of these image elements that are nested inside this div element, delegate that event to the parent element, that is to the div element, and the div element has got the respective event handlers, that is mouse over, mouse out, and click. So these event handler functions are, are going to handle that respective event for the image elements that are nested. So now let's go ahead and run the page. The behavior should be exactly the same as before. Look at this. When I click on this thumbnail, the old image slowly fades out and the new image slowly fades in. Now let's see how to enhance this image gallery using these two drop-down lists and these two buttons. So first we need to get that UI. So just before the main image element, I'm going to include a drop-down list using the select element. Let's give it an ID. Let's call this select IMG effect and we want to have two options here and the op value for the first option is going to be fade and that's the value that we want to display to the user and the second option value is going to be slide we need another drop down list and let's change the ID of this drop-down list to select IMG duration. And we basically want six options here. So the first option is going to be 0 0.5 seconds. Similarly, let's have 
and options for one to five seconds and in the interest of time I have already typed the required HTML so we have those options so this option uh, drop-down list is for the duration so let's include this text time in seconds and this drop-down list is for effect so let's say select effect and then we need two button elements so input type equals button let's give it an ID let's actually call this btn enlarge and the value on the button is going to be enlarge so let's make a copy of the button let's call this shrink and the value on the button is going to say shrink and let's include two HTML break elements alright so let's save the changes let's reload this page and we should get a UI that's similar to what we see on the slide alright now we need to retrieve the effect that the user has selected and the time that the user has selected from the respective drop-down list. So within the click event handler function, I'm going to create two more variables. So variable, let's name this effect and we need to retrieve the effect that the user has selected from this drop-down list, which has got an ID of select IMG effect. So let's find the element by ID and we want to retrieve the selected value so I'm going to use val function similarly we want to retrieve the duration as well so the name of the variable is going to be duration and we want to retrieve that from a different drop-down list and the ID of that drop-down list is select IMG duration so retrieve the duration using the val function from that drop-down list but keep in mind the value that we have here is in seconds so we want milliseconds so I'm going to multiply the value that we get from the drop-down list by 1000 so that's going to give us number of milliseconds that the user has selected alright now within this variable we have the effect so I'm going to check the effect that the user has selected if effect equals fade if that's the option that the user has selected within the drop-down list then we have to do what we have here fade out and fade in else what we want to do is slide up and slide down so I'm going to make a copy of this and instead of fade out and fade in I'm going to use slide up and slide down now notice here we are finding the same DOM element twice so instead of that let's cache it in a variable so let's create a variable here let's call this main IMG equals that and we can use this variable so main image dot fade out similarly main image dot slide up alright and another thing that we need to do here notice we're actually hard coding the duration right instead of hard coding it for 500 milliseconds we want to use the value that the user has selected from the drop-down list so I'm going to use this variable so let's pass that to fade out and fade in and slide up and slide down function so let's save the changes let's go ahead and reload our page and look at this let's select slide and let's select two seconds as the duration look at that now when I click on thumbnail look at that old image slides up new image slides down and that animation happens over a period of two seconds let's select fade click on this look at that now instead of slide effect we have the fade effect and that happens over a period of two seconds now let's go ahead and implement this enlarge and shrink at the moment nothing happens when you click these buttons so these buttons have got an ID so the ID of the button that is the enlarge button is BTN enlarge so let's find that button by ID and when we click the button we want to call a function and what do we want to do we want to increase the height and width 
by 100 pixels. To do that, we first need to find the current height and width. So here I'm going to create a variable. Let's actually call this main img element equals dollar find the main image element. Okay, we want to get the height and width of this main image element. And that image element has got an ID which is nothing but main image. So let's copy that. So we have the main image element. We want the height of that main image element. So let me create a variable. Let's call it height equals main image element. And how are we going to get the current height? We can use the ATTR function. So we want an attribute value. What attribute value do we want? We want the height attribute value. So the name of the attribute is going to be height. Similarly, we need width as well. So the name of the attribute here is going to be width. Now we need to convert the height and width to integer because we want to add 100 to each of them. So I'm going to use parse int function. Okay, let's do the same thing here for width. All right, so within the click event handler function, the first thing that we need to do is increment height by 100 pixels. So height plus equals 100 similarly width plus equals 100 and then the next important thing that we need to do is set that new height and width to that main image element and to do that I'm going to use animate function okay so on the main image element I'm going to call animate function and basically you can use this animate function to animate any property, any style property. Okay, we'll discuss in detail about this animate function in a later video session. At the moment, we are using this animate function to change the height and width of the main image element. Okay, and I'm going to do that since we have to change two properties. I'm going to do that using a JSON object. Okay, so I'm using two curly braces. The first property that I want to change or animate is height and that needs to be in quotes and the value of that is going to come from this variable and the next property is width and that is going to come from the other variable that we have so that is enlarged so let's make a copy of this and the other button is going to be shrink so when we click the shrink button we want to reduce height and width by 100 pixels so let's save the changes let's reload this page and look at this when we click the shrink button the height and width is reduced by 100 pixels when we click enlarge button the height and width is increased by 100 pixels every time we click that button Thank you for listening and have a great day.